Assalamu alaikum, my beloved brothers and sisters. We all know that backbiting is prohibited. So, what is the meaning of backbiting? Backbiting actually refers to speaking about someone in their absence, something that is true that they would be offended by if they were to hear it. That is called backbiting. So, dikruka akhaka bima yakrah, to mention your brother or your sister. Uh, in their absence with something they would not like. That is backbiting. And backbiting is prohibited completely. Now, what we don't realize sometimes is we do engage in backbiting and we don't even know. So I'm wa I want to spend a few moments reminding myself and yourselves to become more conscious of what we say. We've been saying this all along. Become conscious of what you're saying. Become conscious of what you utter. But the detail sometimes we don't address. So when I'm saying things, when I'm speaking, I need to know that it's an opportunity for me to gain closeness to the Almighty, for me to say something good, for me to earn and to clock mileage, for me to purchase my paradise, so to speak, by, by using the currency that will be valid on that day, uh, which is a good deed or good deeds. And therefore, I definitely, definitely, need to seize the opportunity to say something that is best. When we talk about others behind their backs, mostly we say bad things. Now, can you not spend a moment searching the life of that person to look for the good they have and say the good things? Why is it that our weakness makes us only look at the bad things, the evil things, and we have the worst to say about our brothers and sisters? So the challenge we have right now and this is a challenge that obviously is for me and for you, is to actually search for the good in people and talk about your mother-in-law or anyone else. You've got to, <laughs> sorry to use that example, but it's something they bad things about. Your spouse, whoever it is, search for the good they have and say good things about them. Search for good in people and say the good things about them. We don't have to speak about the one evil thing or bad thing. Let's not even use the term evil, but the one bad thing that people have and suddenly and that's the only thing we know about them so remember uh, we are required to look at the good that people have in fact you know spying and eavesdropping is prohibited in Islam the Quran prohibits spying on people so spending your effort your resources trying to look into the lives of people in order to find where they've gone wrong what they've done what they're doing in their private lives and making an effort to go into that is totally prohibited the Quran says Wala tajassasu. just before the prohibition of backbiting the Almighty says don't spy on one another now a lot of people are so excited to try and find out more about others we want to bug the phone and tap this and try and find out this and try and you know we're excited about people being exposed and so on we spoke about that slightly in the previous insta live but today i want to make this quite clear that it's our duty to speak good about people to search for the good they have and to mention the good and if there is something bad then we need to ask ourselves, am I involved in it? Am I, for example, uh, a party or am I being affected by it? Does it concern me? If it doesn't concern you, you start off by praying for the person. And if you can, then you definitely would uh, try to get the message across to them in a beautiful way. And their account is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if, for example, uh, uh, it, it, it concerns you, and definitely you're, you're affected by it, then you might want to address the matter by uh, perhaps involving a higher authority, perhaps uh, doing something a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more serious about it. Uh, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for us. So uh, the tongue that we have, many times we think that backbiting is only connected to speaking something bad about someone in their absence. But in fact, nowadays with social media, Many people WhatsApp, uh, they use WhatsApp, you know. Uh, WhatsApp has become a verb, actually. You know, I WhatsApp this guy or I WhatsApped him.
become a verb actually. They, people use it that way. So many people use WhatsApp. They use uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever else it might be, uh, even Instagram, and they say nasty things about others. This is dangerous. It's also considered backbiting. Now, we will be accountable, we are accountable, responsible for what we say, what we do. Just like the angels taking a record of what we say, we are taking our own record of what we've actually typed out on our screen and forwarded. So we get a message, we forward it, not realizing we've earned such a big sin by merely forwarding this message. We thought it was merely forwarding. It's not merely forwarding. If it has in it the insult of another person, it is totally wrong. If it has in it something bad about that person, it is totally wrong. And remember, I said earlier on, right at the beginning of the session, backbiting is to mention the truth about someone in their absence in a way that they would dislike it if they heard it. What about if someone were to lie? If they were to lie, actually it becomes uh, slander, which is worse than backbiting. So that is bohtan in the Arabic language. Now, to lie about someone uh, is really unacceptable. Please make sure that when you forward messages, when you create a message and say things, Please make sure it's responsible. I promise you the angels are recording it. Not only the angels, but your phone has recorded it as well. The messages are encrypted within your phone. They're backed up every so often. So you, we're in deep trouble if we've said some nasty things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. As well as here in this world, there is a lot that we would pay uh, as a result of us having said something bad about someone. So... Uh, if it's not true, it's even more unacceptable. If it is true, it is still unacceptable. The only exception when it comes to speaking the truth about someone behind their back that might not be so good is when bad has happened to you and you are trying to deal with it or do something about it. For example, I report to the police. I cannot go to the police station and say, listen guy, um, well, someone's really done something really nasty. I can't tell you who he is or what he's done because it's going to be backbiting. <laughs> That's actually foolish. So you have to tell them, listen, someone's done something. This is who they are and this is what they did. And that's not backbiting. Allah doesn't like you to uh, out openly declare that which is bad about someone unless you have been oppressed yourself. So number one is to report it to someone. Even if you're reporting it to a parent, you go to the parent, for example, say, you know, your child did this and this. The idea is to correct the child, not to tarnish the image of the child uh, and so on. The same would apply to someone else. If you were to report in order for them to be corrected in a respectful way, not to expose or to make a disgrace of them. Uh, also, you would be allowed to speak about it if you were to warn someone about a person. Two quick examples. One is... When a person is going to go into a business venture or a dealing with someone whom you have been ripped off by and they ask you, what do you think about this guy? Have you, do you, you know, would you recommend him? You can't say, nah, well, look, it's up to you. You know the truth. It's your duty to tell them, look, we're not backbiting because obviously it happened to me. But I would, uh, I would advise you not to deal with this person because they've actually stolen X amount of money from me or I had a major problem with them to say the least. Second example is that of marriage. When you know that someone is a drug addict and a really, you know, a, an addict of something evil or, uh, you know, they're not bothered about uh, goodness and so on, and people say, oh, you know, my daughter would like to get married to so-and-so, what do you think? And you say, oh, yeah, good guy, good guy. You know, you're lying. That lie is worse than having told them the truth. And don't say, oh, I couldn't have told them because it's backbiting. In this particular instance, it is something you have to make clear. It's not backbiting. You've got to say, look, we've had a problem. There was a major problem. And you may not want to give every detail, but a little bit of detail so that they can have an enlightened decision that they make regarding marriage, which is an absolutely important uh, decision uh, that, that would be made. So these are some of the times when you're allowed to say something about someone that in their absence that is true, but it's not so nice. But otherwise, if you're not involved or if it's not to do with uh, you being oppressed or it's not to do with someone asking for a reference for an important thing, then definitely uh, it would be uh, it would not be correct. Another quick example is say, for, say someone wants to employ a person and they ask you for a reference. You cannot lie in the reference. You need to say, this person worked for me before and 
they were uh, they were caught uh, doing X, Y, and Z, and this is the reason why they were released from job, and so on. It's important to be honest, but with respect. The idea is not to insult someone, but to let those who are now going to make a decision about them to make an enlightened decision. So my brothers and sisters, uh, I want to remind you once again that uh, let's be conscious not only of what we utter, what we say, don't backbite, don't spy on people, but at the same time, what you forward on social media, what you type, what you, please be careful because we are definitely, definitely responsible for what we forward. Um, in fact, in fact, when someone forwards a message, even if it has something uh, that is unacceptable like nudity, foul language, uh, and so don't forward it to others because you will definitely be sinful for that behavior. You are spreading that uh, corrupt uh, message to others. Don't be a tool of spreading false messages on social media to others. If you've received a message that is false or evil or sinful, you may, you, in fact, you should just delete it. Maybe tell the person who sent it to you, please don't send me messages of this nature. But to forward it, you're guilty from many different angles. One of them is the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've done something absolutely and totally wrong. So uh, please try and make sure that w when there is a good message, forward it or talk about it or benefit from it. When there is a bad message, delete it. Try and tell the person who sent it to you not to send it to you. And also don't forward it at any cost to others because you will be guilty of it. Uh, say good about people. Go and search people's lives to find good, not to find bad. So if you are spying on a person, generally it's looking for something bad in their lives in order to tarnish their image or in order to say something bad about them or prove a point, etc. That is prohibited in Islam. But if you're searching their lives in order to learn a good point and in order to try and get goodness, then inshallah it will be something beneficial for all of us. My brothers and sisters, just like we would like um, people to say good things about us, we should also be saying good things about others. And like I've told you, the exception uh, about uh, backbiting uh, is quite clear when you've been oppressed, like Allah says in uh, the Quran. And secondly, when uh, we need to give a reference uh, sometimes uh, upon important matters and decisions that are being made by others about those people, like, like I've explained earlier. Uh, brothers and sisters, unfortunately, I won't be able to take questions, but inshallah, I'm going to post this live session up uh, on YouTube shortly, and I pray that we can all benefit from it. Jazakumullah khair. The idea here is to contribute towards living in a better world by the will of Allah and to be able to live in harmony with people whom we differ with as well, uh, with people of all faiths and inshallah people of uh, different nationalities and races. All of that uh, should not make us forget that we are part and parcel of one family, humankind, the children of Adam alayhi salam. And that's what makes us inshallah people who are respectful and honored by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, may Allah grant us ease. أقول قولي هذا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته